Welcome to The Globe, the show that brings you all the headline stories in South Africa and delving deep into issues beyond our borders. I'm Lulu Gabu. Thank you for joining us. First up, our top story. Oh, we are. We have a guest in studio with us, and we're going straight up into it. Uh, uh, Mr. Nkosana Charles Moyo is joining us in studio, and uh, we're going to be discussing the cabinet in Zimbabwe. This is a cabinet that has been announced by Pre President Emerson Nagagwa, and uh, this is a cabinet that is going to be sworn in tomorrow, which is on Monday. Your take on this cabinet? Well, my take is that on the face of it, it's a, a promising cabinet. We've got a Minister of Finance who is eminently qualified, comes from outside the system though, which I think people have to take into account. We've got a cabinet, I think, which for the first time appears to represent the, de the demographic of the country in terms of uh, different age groups. Mm -hmm. So on the face of it, on paper, I think uh, there is reason to be reasonably optimistic. But I think what people need to be careful about is the alignment of the different parts of the team. Uh, firstly, the agenda of the team leader, the president himself, I don't think we can claim to be absolutely clear what he believes he needs to be done in terms of his prioritization of what the problems that actually uh, dog the country are. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the party, because it's not just a president, it's a president coming from a party that has run Zimbabwe for the past 38 years. Mm -hmm. So they've got a particular way of doing things. Are they just going to turn around all of a sudden and do things differently we do not know we have to wait and see and i think it's right as a zimbabwean to be hopeful that what is being presented appears like i say on the face of it mm. to uh, present to us an opportunity for the country to go on a different trajectory is this not an, an, an opportunity as you mentioned this is an opportunity for president emerson nagagwa and is he not showing that he is looking to go in a different direction with regards to how things were done in the past 38 years of ZANU-PF uh, leadership in the country. Already, he's downsized the cabinet from 35 ministers to 20 ministers, mm -hmm. which uh, you know has, has never been done before. It's, it's always been um, a, a bloated or numbers have been increased. Mm -hmm. Just the thought process there, because um, you know there's a lot of uh, skepticism in, ter in, in terms of what he is, his thought, uh, thoughts are with mm. regards mm. to how things are going to work. And, uh, you know, is this not an indication? Mm. And just mm. the appointment of uh, the finance minister. Well, you know, like I say, I think we have to be very careful and say be the qualification that on the face of things and in terms of what is being said verbally, but when we look at what is being done, what has been done since November up to now, a lot of what has been done does not actually resonate with what is being said in terms of prioritization, in terms of a clarity of understanding where the problem actually lies. Mm. When you look at the cabinet, again, on the face of it, we've been presented with 20 cabinet ministers, but they are still deputy ministers. They are still actually minister rank mm. people in provinces whose job is very questionable. Mm. So there is an administration which is still bloated although the top line appears to be reduced. When you look at what is behind the scenes, there is still a lot of padding that is taking place, mm -hmm. which does not augur well, as far as I'm concerned, for what we'd like to see happen, mm -hmm. if that actually was a serious intent. Mm -hmm. I mean, ag again, you may not know. Soon after the elections, one of the first acts that President Mnangagwa uh, did was to give 90 vehicles to, to chiefs. If you go to any city in Harare today, there is no clean water. There's no clean water. Mm. And uh, the amount of money that has gone into things which do not seem to indicate an understanding of the priorities where the Zimbab Zimbabweans are suffering, I have to continue to be skeptical. You have to excuse me in, in continuing to be skeptical. We'll wait and see. We'll give me a chance to deliver. But, but I cannot help it but be skeptical about what I see being done and what I hear being said and the lack of convergence in those two things. 
Now, let's speak about the finance minister, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of excitement with regards to this new finance minister who's going to be taking the portfolio. What are some of the challenges that he's going to be facing? <laughs> Just discipline in terms of government expenditure. The nature of the budget itself in terms of what money gets spent and where it gets spent. There is a lot of consumptive spending in Zimbabwe as opposed to investment that has taken place. This, the budget in Zimbabwe, more than 90% of the Zimbabwean budget goes to paying civil service salaries. That's just not normal. So Mtuli is going to have to deal with these issues. The lack of discipline in government spending, which has led to a liquidity crisis, which is ongoing as we speak, is something that he's going to deal with. A, car a country that does not have a currency of its own because of irresponsible behavior on the government's part is something he has to deal with. These are huge challenges. It does not mean they cannot be surmounted. But what it requires is for people to understand, Mtuli on his own cannot deliver this. Mtuli is capable, but the team has to work together with Mtuli in order for the government or the team to deliver this. So we should not be misled to believe that one member of a team can deliver what needs to be done in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. The whole team would have to work in a very joined up way with clarity of what the agenda is and the appropriate understanding of what sacrifices are needed by the country, citizens as a whole for this to be delivered. Now, how much time do you think is required for um, this new cabinet that's going to be sworn in to, to sort of show their prowess in terms of delivery? How much time do you think, um, uh, in the norm, a lot of countries look at 100 days into office. Do you think 100 days is enough for Zimbabwe and uh, what Zimbabwe has gone through economically? I don't believe so. And the reason why I don't believe that 100 days is enough, firstly, the team that has been assembled, and I mean, uh, with due respect to President Mnangagwa and acknowledging the particular approach he's taken, there are a lot of new people in that team, mm. which means these new people you have to get to grips with the facts on the ground in order to establish a baseline of where they are starting from. Mm. So most of the 100 days, actually, will go towards establishing that baseline. From the baseline, then they can then plan and put targets and timelines of what is achievable, having understood where they are starting from. Mm. So if you ask me realistically, what should we as Zimbabweans expect to see? I would say the actual results cannot come on this side of, let's say, 18 to 24 months. Mm. But having said that, if you understand where the prioritization lies, there are certain things that they can begin to do immediately provided they understand that Zimbabwe's problem is domestic. Mm. Not the line that we've been fed by ZANU for the past 38 years that it's external. It is domestic. It is the behavior of the government. It is corruption. It is nepotism. The appointment of people who are not capable, who have destroyed all of the state-owned enterprises, for instance. Those things can be done immediately. Mm. So I think there is signaling that can take place but in terms of beginning to really show where the country is headed, firstly, there's got to be a baseline done and then a plan put in place on that basis. And I would say 18 months to 24 months, we'll begin to see the results. Mm. Let's speak about the gender representation in the new cabinet. Mm. Mm. A, lot of, a, a lot of movement there. And uh, what's your take on that? And in terms of uh, President Nagagwa, is he going in the right direction? You know, again, I hesitate. I, I, I know this is a very sensitive issue, and so my comments have to be quite carefully understood what I'm getting at. Yeah. You know, often we go for numbers without necessarily drilling down into the quality of the people that are being put in place. Yeah. So the cabinet, as we've already said, represents the demographic in terms of age, no problem. And I think to some, uh, a large extent, even the gender issues have been addressed, even at very senior levels, as you know. Mm -hmm. Minister of Defense has gone to a lead and so on and so on. But I think at the end of the day, we're going to have to s wait and see whether these individuals are capable of delivering as opposed to just being representatives of a particular gender. Can they do the job? Mm -hmm. 
that's what we have to be patient and wait and so see. as you as you said earlier 18 to 24 months yeah. now the opposition has outrightly rejected this cabinet and uh, um, claiming it is um, appointed by an illegitimate president an illegitimate government um, you know will the MDC um, be able to govern alongside um, the ZANU PF government, especially cons looking at um, you know the lower tiers mm. of government, mm. will mm. they be able to work together? Will the MDC um, not push an agenda of rendering this new uh, government ungovernable? Well, I, 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 I think the MDC have to deal with. Firstly, I don't want to debate the issue of the election results mm. because I, I mean the, a, a process has taken place. This thing was taken to court and the, the courts decided. Mm -hmm. So let's leave that aside. Mm -hmm. But where the MDC, you've got control of, for instance, local government, mm -hmm. I think it's up to them. They have to demonstrate that they've got capacity, they put people who are ab able to deliver what the people want, what the people need in local communities, in local councils and the like. So whether they approve or disapprove, of what ZANU does is completely relevant. Mm. MDC, you've got an opportunity in places where they're in control to demonstrate that they have got the capacity and they deliver. Mm. So the debate about whether ZANU is legitimate or not, I don't think is relevant to their ability to demonstrate delivery and capacity. Going forward mm. into the future of uh, Zimbabwe, um, you know, decisions have been taken. You've mentioned already the fact that um, a first point of order should be looking at corruption, should be nepotism, and dealing with those issues that can be taken care of in the early stages. Mm -hmm. The future of Zimbabwe, after these issues have been dealt with, what should be the next step to ensure that Zimbabwe goes back to where it used to be and even better mm -hmm. as an economic mm -hmm. powerhouse? Well, I think there are a number of things which, again, everybody knows about. Zimbabwe suffers from inordinately high levels of um, unemployment. Mm. Zimbabwe suffers, as we said, from a budget which does not make sense. When you're spending more than 90% of your budget on salaries, it means your civil service is bloated, it's not correct sized. There is no resource left for investing in infrastructure, for instance, and the like. Mm. So there are a lot of things that have to be dealt with which have got nothing to do with the outside world, where, where I say we is an opposition party are going to look to see whether what is being said and what is being done are aligned. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going to measure the cabinet and the president himself and the ruling party because they're the ones who won a mandate to rule for the next five years. Mm -hmm. So we want to see these things being dealt with. We want to see agriculture coming back and Zimbabwe being able to feed its own people. We want to see Zimbabwe hopefully getting a current of its own because it is not very <coughs> practical to run a country and an economy using somebody else's currency. You can't control what happens in terms of monetary policy. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that are going to test whether in fact this is a competent government, mm -hmm. competent cabinet and a competent president. Mr. Moyo, thank you so much for joining us. We'll leave it there for now. That is uh, Mr. Ngosana Charles Moyo joining us live in studio. Time now for a quick break. More news when we return. Stay with us.